Hello everyone and welcome back. I think it's time we talk about the elephant in the room. I know there's been a lot of discussion on Reddit in the past couple of weeks, but I feel like I'll just cut through the crap and get to the point here. Pew Pew at m 2 Tac Part 2 did not go exactly well for Pappy, and I'm sure some of you will want to know what went wrong, and how it ended up to be a turkey shoot. Keep in mind, I'm just a lowly line member of Pappy, and it's not privy to high level strategic knowledge, so 100% of what I'll discuss is my own opinion, or from the statements of the coalition leaders that have been made public in recent days. The major topics that we're going to discuss today is how the battle itself unfolded, tales of spooky ghost titans, server tanking, and the way forward. At the end of the first battle, Pappy forces traded blows with the Imperium forces fairly evenly, and the battle for the most part was celebrated as a good fight all around. Morale was high on both sides, as EVE players again set new world records for the greatest pew pew of all time. And the stage was set for another record-breaking event, as the Pappy forces were gearing up for the Holtheimer of the Keepstar. However, the first battle went all the way to server downtime, and capital assets were still stuck in Interdiction Sphere, which meant that they would reappear in the same location upon relogging, while the Imperium Super Capital Fleet would simply log back in and be safely tethered to the Keepstar, Pappy Supers would immediately be trapped within the bubbles. So High Command made a decision to keep them logged off until the final fight. January 2nd, 2021, a few hours before the start of the battle, over 5,000 Imperium pilots had already formed an M2 TAC, in case some of our capitals decided to log in early. And most of the Imperium Titans were situated well below the Keepstar, so that they would be well within range of the Doomsday weapons. Meanwhile, in T5Z, Pappy's staging system, the system swells to approximately 6,000 pilots as supercarriers and Titan reinforcement flooded in. A few minutes before the start of the battle, Pandemic Horde Onyx Fleet landed on green, well above the Keepstar, where the Imperium sent literally thousands of fighter bombers in case Pappy forces decide to jump in at that location. That position would place our friendly fleet where enemy Titan Doomsday Weapon cannot reach them without the Titans redocking in heavy tie-dye, which can take well over an hour real time. And who knows how long it would take enough for them to undock to be able to trade blows with the possibility of 1,000 Titans jumping in. Because this is a hull timer for the Keepstar, if Pappy forces were able to inch towards destroying the Keepstar, it would then be the Imperium Superfleet that would be trapped in M2 TAC. One of the biggest questions I was asked was that why not jump to the safety tether of the Fortazar next door? I think that's a valid point. This would allow the entire fleet to form a doom stack before heading towards the Keepstar for the brawl. But I'm certain that the Imperium would lay into Dishon Sphere to disrupt any super capital fleet from getting on grid, or worse, have our super capital fleet split up and stuck between bubbles would have resulted in an even more disastrous situation. If you guys have ever waited for Titans and Supers to align, you know all too well how this can go wrong real fast. Regardless of where we enter the battle, it was clear that we were going to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. The battle has been too hyped up to not go forward with, and the logged off titans were needed to come home. We were going to pay for this battle with blood. The call was made. Multiple signals were lit above the Keepstar, with thousands of enemy fighter bombers already in place. And our capital fleet from T5Z made the jump into shark infested waters. In my disbelief, or as some other may put it, you should have known better. What materialized in M2 TAC was a mere handful of titans instead of a few hundred with little to no fact support and surrounded by thousands of Imperium fighter bombers. The short range bombers wasted no time and began shredding the Pappy Titans. An hour would go by, small groups of titans and supercarriers would continue to materialize on grid as they exit the jump tunnel only to be immediately deleted out of existence before the next small group would be allowed to enter the system. Meanwhile, in T5Z, with hundreds of pilots already committed to the jump command, all they could do at the time was wait for their turn to go through the meat grinder. With the Keepstar repair timer ticking down in real time instead of heavy tie-dye we were facing, it was impossible to get enough super capitals on grid to even pause it before being volleyed out of existence, and a call was made to call off the attack. As Z-Kill began reporting kill mails, we started noticing that several Titans and supercarriers were showing up unfitted, which brings us to the next point of discussion, Ghost Titans. Reports on ZQ came flowing in showing unfitted Titans and supercarrier kill mills. Pilots were getting notified that they were killed while they were still stuck in a jump tunnel, and would later report that they were able to spawn back in T5Z and were still alive and well, even though they had received a kill mill that had been generated for the death of their ship. 
Suetonia made a comprehensive spreadsheet showing all the supercarriers and titans that died in an M2 TAC, and it would seem that approximately 205 kill mails were generated in a 7 hour battle. 118 kill mails were ghost. While I wasn't able to confirm if all the ghost titans had actually survived, but most of the pilots were saying yes, so I guess that's one thing to be thankful for. CCP themselves were not able to explain why these strange occurrences had happened, but when the server reached that kind of capacity it was facing that night, they had no idea what was going to happen. Before the fight had even started, there was a combined peak of nearly 14,000 players split between 1DQ, T5Z, and m 2 TAC, which accounts for around 35% of the total online population of EVE. CCP themselves said the only system that had a population cap was Cheetah, but during the fight, we seem to have hit an imaginary barrier at around 6,500 players in local. This is not to say that 6,500 was the cap. It was just the breaking point of the server. As for the remaining 330-ish titans currently logged off in M2TAC, I would like to say that while yes, that is a lot of assets tied up, but the Imperium would also have to have it constantly hell camped, which in turn ties up their own assets, and this camp could hinder their own ability to respond to any large supercarrier escalations elsewhere without the risk of the sleeping titans in M2TAC being broken out. Whether this theory holds true or not I do not know, as there have not been any significant battles where supercarriers and titans were dropped en masse since the massacre of M2TAC. I feel that both sides each are holding a trump card, but who has the bigger trump card is yet to be revealed. Let's talk about server tanking. The quote, we should have known better, was tossed around, as well as we should have formed earlier. But what I really don't want this battle to do is set the precedence for future battles within Delve, where the side that crams the most pilot into the system early enough decides the outcome of the battle, as objectives are still calculated in real time, while everyone else is stuck in tie-dye. We saw the full effect of server tanking when we lost a few iHubs because fleets were stuck in heavy tie-dye and were not able to contest as our faster moving jackdaw fleet could do nothing against heavily tanked faxes and tosisling the objectives while our munin fleets were stuck in bubbles and, and engaging the Imperium hack fleets. I also think we had some bad luck with node spawns, but again, shit happens. I think it's fair to say that well over half of EVE population is in Delve right now and it wouldn't be fair if we blame the servers entirely and we need to rethink our strategy to work around the limitation of technology if we want to win this war. Pappy forces are now finding themselves fighting a reinvigorated foe. The Imperium victory at M2 TAC XFE fueled the much needed morale boost and the Imperium war drums are now beating louder than ever. Heavy assault cruiser brawls are frequent and violent and the Imperium continues to bleed Pappy forces as we attempt to secure or defend IHUBs within Delve. That's not to say that Pappy has thrown in a towel. If anything, it has driven the need for revenge, and boy are we thirsty for blood. But before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. As for this month's giveaway, I have 20 partner exclusive Caracol Scope Syndication YC112 skin. Oh, what a mouthful. Just be subscribed, like the video, and comment below any personal thoughts, or just tell me I'm flat out wrong. You won't hurt my feelings, I promise. I'll be picking winners from the comment sections from this point forward, so just, just keep doing your thing, and good luck. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye for now.